Hey everyone, in this and the next few videos, we are going to discuss in details uniform flow. Now, if you remember from our earlier discussions, open channel flow can be broad, broadly divided into three different types of flows. The first one is the uniform flow where the channel cross section as well as the flow properties do not change from one section to another as you move along the channel. The second type of flow is called gradually varied flow GVF and the third type of flow is called rapidly varying flow. So uniform flow is when you have two sections section 1 and section 2 along the length of the channel. We have the velocities at these two sections equal and we also have the depth of flow in these two sections equal. In gradually varied flow these depths and velocities are not equal however at each section we assume that the streamline curvatures are small And this implies that if we assume the pressure distribution to be hydrostatic at each section, then that assumption is correct. Pressure distribution is hydrostatic. In rapidly varying flow, as the name suggests, the flow properties change very rapidly and the streamline curvatures are large. So pressure distribution is not hydrostatic. And for each of these three cases, you may have steady versus unsteady flows. When the flow properties do not change with time, the, the flow is called a steady flow and when it changes with time, it's called an unsteady flow. Now, let us look at some examples here for each of these flow situations. In the first case, so this is case A. Let's call this case A. So, in the first case, as we see the depth Y0 at the upstream section is exactly equal to the depth y naught at the downstream section. If you plot the velocity profiles, the profiles would also be roughly the same, which is something like this. But because we are considering average velocity, so we re replace this velocity distribution by the average velocity at section 1, at section 1 equal to v1 and the average velocity at section 2 is v2 and they happen to be equal. And the primary requirement for this to happen is something called a prismatic channel which means the cross section of the channel does not change as you move along the channel. So here we see a rectangular cross section with the depth of flow as y0, the bottom width is b and the, here the weighted perimeter would be b plus 2 times y0. The hydraulic radius is the area divided by the weighted perimeter and the hydraulic depth if you recall is the area divided by the top width. The top width happens to be exactly equal to the bottom width for a rectangular channel. And for a wide rectangular channel, the relationship between R and the depth of flow is R equal to the depth of flow. So this is what uh, we have already seen earlier. What you see in case B on the other hand, so if this is my case B, here we see that the depth of flow at the upstream section y1 is not equal to y2 and at each section the depth can also vary with time as you can see in this figure in the second figure and this is an example where the streamline curvatures are small so we have we can assume pressure distribution to be hydrostatic which means 
at this section you will have a triangular pressure distribution at this section you will have a triangular pressure distribution and so on so this is a case of gradually varied flow and finally if you have a sudden operation such as a sudden opening of this sluice gate which creates a surge to travel upstream then you would have rapidly varying conditions immediately upstream of the gate if you have an opening of the gate on the other hand where flow changes from supercritical to subcritical you may have a hydraulic jump and this the the middle part here is where you see a lot of turbulence flow changes really rapidly and you cannot assume the hydrostatic distribution to be valid in this section this is where the rapidly varying flow takes place so we have our case c case c is rapidly varying flow we are going to discuss in details uniform flow in the next few videos see you